வணக்கம் நேர்களே வெல்கம் பேக் டு அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் வடபோச்சே தமிழ் பாட்காஸ்ட் வி ஆர் நவ் அவேலபிள் ஆன் மோஸ்ட் ஸ்ட்ரீமிங் பிளாட்ஃபார்ம்ஸ் விச் இஸ் ஸ்பாடிஃபை யூடியூப் ஆப்பிள் பாட்காஸ்ட் கூகுள் பாட்காஸ்ட் ஆர் எந்த பாட்காஸ்ட் பிளாட்ஃபார்மில் நீங்கள் கேட்குறதா இருந்தாலும் நீங்கள் அதை கேட்டுக்கலாம் நம்மள சோஷியல் மீடியாவில் நீங்கள் ஃபைன் பண்ணலாம் அட் வடபோச்சே தமிழ் பாட்காஸ்ட் இன்ஸ்டாகிராம் அண்ட் டிக்டாக் லீவ் ஆஸ் அ காமெண்ட் மெசேஜ் அனுப்புங்க ஏதாவது ஃபீட்பேக் இருந்தாலும் சொல்லுங்கள் வில் டெஃபினெட்லி ரிப்ளை டு யூ கேஸ் So please reach out to us and let's have a conversation going. Enjoy the show. You all know Nas Daily, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he actually has this 6 month where every month he will actually experience one religion. So he started with Hinduism, then he went to Buddhism and then atheism. So now he moved to the next tree. We just should go and watch. Right. Yeah, yeah cuz every month like he literally spends the whole entire month trying to understand that religion. So I think his perspective is something really the way he portrayed it was very beautiful. So he actually yeah. goes and just he literally experienced the whole entire month so for the Buddhist right he was a monk he was in a monk I think in China or stuff like that yeah so he practiced how a Buddhist real he read was with the monk and all and then he came out with his what he learned from that Oh and I got the very cause and I know that same yes yeah and I have seen for the finance something everyone should experience <laughs> once yeah. in your lifetime yeah. to understand different religions and different perspectives right? because yeah. ultimately what you would understand about every religion right you look within mm. yourself all the answers all those rules are already there you mm. just follow those rules you'll know like for example some people if you guys have friends or cousins or right, you would realize at least one or two of your cousins excessively shower okay but they excessively shower because of the fact that they're very sensitive to energies and they need to cleanse their auras or every like wherever they go whatever they do and that also you would realize that they are more sensitive when it comes to emotions they might not be very talkative in a sense mm-hmm. define excessively shower yeah actually <laughs> i don't know like maybe four times a day oh, three times a day excessively shower <laughs> yeah but it's because you feel uncomfortable not starting something like for example let's say that you have two things to do today and you have like a two hour break in between you're going to go shower before you go for the second thing if uh, yeah i I'm telling myself that shower because it's hot, like stupidly hot. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, actually before I, if let's like say I, I am done with task one and yep. I'm about to embark on task two, especially yep. if he's going out, mm-hmm. I shower. Yeah, so you have to, you see, like that's what I do too. Like before this, I finished work and I took a quick shower. So it's yeah. because we're sensitive to energies and we need to always feel cleansed. Right. And that is a sign that what, like Vanessa always talks about um, helping spread listening to your body she wants like she always talks about listening to your body itself and i think this is an example of listening to your body you will re- realize that if you just focus inside of you right not even anything else or nothing else that's happening around you everything that every religion teaches you can automatically figure it out and you'll be like oh my god i know this i know this i know this when you read different books on hinduism or buddhism or any kind of uh, any religion to be honest when it, like for example even islam it talks about cleansing your aura it talks mm. about covering your aura and making sure you don't interact with things too much because that yeah just now you mentioned episode arm which was psychic siblings ne ne suninga adha patti konjam vivarama velavariya sollama um adha expand pandrek avale illa but basically okay in our family we have a lineage of more heightened psychic abilities so a lot of our family the generation before us rejected it a lot and i think the generation before that also somewhat they rejected it a lot because they were very religious and whatever but in terms of us i think that we were always the rebellious ones so we actually bonded over very similar stories like we would both go for like catechism classes or whatever and we would like basically church classes and during the breaks or after that we all go and explore in the library read some books about spirituality so we were always interested in the occult and stuff like this so i think at one point she took the first steps to going into the occult like as in i did my own set of things but it was just my practices i never like learned about readings or anything like that and she was more focused on the spiritual journey i was more focused on the doing cool the stuff the craft like, side of things yeah so i used to like you know make winds blow really fast you know make rain come and do weird cool things like this hmm. and she used to be more on the i'm going to focus more on the inside part of things so in terms of my abilities i used to be an empath or i still am an empath so basically that means that The the reason why I realized is one time I was working in McDonald's. Okay, I used to work in McDonald's, okay? So at one point I was sitting outside, I was just chilling and then someone walked past and I didn't even see them. But I had this sudden feeling inside of me that I was really more depressed than I already was. So I walked into my store and like my customer one of my colleagues was like, "Oh, do you see that woman who's just crying and walked out?" And I was like, "No, I didn't see her, but technically whatever she she had 
I caught it. So that's when I realized I was very much more sensitive to emotions. And mm. I think that's when more of my journey started because I was... At what age was this? Sorry to interrupt. Like 14. Uh, yeah. Huh. yeah, 14, 15, around there. I, I have had similar feelings, but not, not, in, mm. in, not in the sense where, where, where they're passing. Yeah, yeah. I had. But it's more like... Connection to your family? No, there, there are some people I met for the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh... And I had the, okay, so I met this person and within like a few seconds, I went to tell someone I know, is someone else I know introduced mm-hmm. me to this person. And yeah. Within a few seconds, I told my, the person I know that there's something wrong with this person. Mm-hmm. But I, at the time, I was battling these thoughts of, I have no basis yeah. for this mm-hmm. and I felt I was being judgmental. But the, yeah. but the, there's just some, I, I used the word, the word vibe at that time because mm-hmm. it just felt very negative. Okay. And I find myself a bit more sensitive to negative Uh, people who have very strong negative emotions mm-hmm. and it takes me a while to uh, I need to interact with people who are positive yeah and once I interact more with people who are positive they, and I'm an introvert by the way yeah. so it is not of, it's not natural not, I wouldn't say use the word natural it's not easy for me to get yeah. charged by interacting with other people yeah. mm-hmm. but there are certain people who I find so positive that I as an introvert I don't mind talking to them mm-hmm. but the, upon first impression I can get the negative vibe so easily yeah so that's actually you being sensitive to energy so it's very similar to what I mentioned you also shower a lot because yeah. of the fact that you are very sensitive to energy so you can easily gauge things and I think it helps you make better decisions if you're more I guess uh, connected or more heightened in that aspect because you know exactly that you know I shouldn't be with this person because it drains me for example so you make better choices for yourself eventually in life and right. that is why you will progress forward compared to other people who are ignorant it's not because Every single person can feel it. Mm. But it's whether you choose to believe it, whether you choose to accept it or not. So sort of like I always say like body, mind and soul. Yeah. So it's actually our body is smarter than us. It knows who is good for us. Even like in a relationship as well, right? The body will already know if this person is good or bad for you. Mm. Like for women, we will have a lot of like acne problem, yeast infection and all of this because you just know that person is not good for you but your mind, you are just trying to psycho it to be with this person. Uh-huh. A lot of time, like even for men as well, you actually see being with this person, something in you, that glow is no more there already. Right. You know, they always say suddenly you see some people together and like, wow, you're so glowing, you're in a very healthy relationship. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. all this, our body knows but mind-wise, we are so like computer already. We can't comprehend it. It's, yeah. it's not comprehensible for our layman, I suppose. Our soul knows it. Our body knows it. But the mind, because we don't let the consciousness to enter, we are so like, I want to control everything that I'm not listening to. Yeah. So like for you, I don't think you're an introvert. You just don't like speaking with everyone. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so it's easier to label like I'm an introvert. Yeah, so yeah. I think you're just selective when it comes yeah. to Because you would realize an introvert doesn't talk too much. But when it comes to good, good people, yeah, you're yeah, good at talking. Yeah. yeah. So I don't mean to be <laughs> all the details I <laughs> Yeah, so, so I hate to talk on the phone, by the way. <laughs> I, uh, Please, uh, I, I, I rather text. Okay. I am more articulate through text because I can think, I have time to process, and okay. I can say what I want. This guy always calls me, and I hate, like, just knowing he called me. I actually had, I could have answered. In my head, I was thinking, fuck this guy. He knows I don't like to talk on the phone. No, sometimes, sometimes I... I'm a, bit, I'm a bit of an asshole. Sometimes it's like, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. No, but then for me, it's like, I find it harder to text because like, whatever is in my head, it's, it's, easier to, it's like, yeah. easier to speak it out than to but type see, it out. Like, that's the thing about me. Like for me, I when I like that person, yes, I'm going to call them and tell them what I need to tell them. But if I genuinely don't feel like, you know, I have the energy to wipe with you right now or whatever, then it's just going to be a text if I need to text. Otherwise, I make it very clear that, okay, right now I don't have the energy to be around mm. you or deal with you. And I think I'm very honest when it comes to it. And I think the friends that I keep in my life, they all know that I have moments where I don't have the energy to genuinely interact with certain people. And I tell them why. I'm very straightforward. Like, if you're always going to be whining about your life, I'm sorry, I don't want to be there. I can listen to you once, twice. But if you repeat the same cycles, you end up with the same outcomes. And I tell you that a million times. So if you repeat the same thing, I'm not going to be there to babysit you. Because it, you're not going to learn. I mean, probably it goes back to what you said, right? We're all connected. So, on the negative energy, you know, then you pa- yeah, we also we're passing that, down. What's the point? <laughs> right? It's yeah. like... Yeah. Yeah. And the whole point of life, right, is for us to unlearn everything that we've learned. Every yeah. single yeah. thing. When you unlearn the boundaries you set on yourself, you literally list... Like Peter Pan has a point. Mm. You believe in something, it's going to work. Okay, so at the end of the day, if you unlearn certain things, you would realize that you can do impossible feats. Mm-hmm. 
And that's why if, you know, if I had the finances, I would do a study with someone who hasn't been exposed to the world and see how much more connected they are than every single human being out here that's lived in a city, for example. And you would see a significant difference, to be honest, because they are more connected. They're connected to nature. They're connected to everything else. And they don't know things, but they can feel those things. Right. Because for us, we have a lot of limiting belief and heavily conditioned, like all of us. Yeah. That's what yeah. you need to unlearn and we learn. Yeah. Completely. But it doesn't mean that you believe in things that don't make sense you know but common sense have to yeah, yeah, yeah like you just you cannot just believe when someone tells you like for example your heart is not a pump so why the hell is it beating if it's not a pump right. okay like you kind of get what i mean conspiracy yeah, yeah. theories yeah <laughs> like i know it's exciting but also it's like, hmm. it's like the, the world the world is flat yeah you know, i the, think the, those kind of i am of the belief i mean i'm not a flat flat earther, by the way. please don't be i'm not I'm gonna <laughs> walk away out of this room <laughs> <laughs> but I am of the belief that um, if you have if you have a, a, a belief about something, it's good to challenge it because mm-hmm. it will either reaffirm you that your belief is strong mm-hmm. or it gets you asking the right questions, which will yep. question your belief in the first place. Yeah. So yeah, I do believe that the earth is round. <laughs> but like, I believe that you should always be open to perspectives. Like even for me, yes, I think some things like like the earth is flat. I'm not necessarily gonna believe you on that because I have observed other things mm. but the point is I'm still going to be open to your perspectives I'm still yeah. going to try to understand them but whether I validate them or whether I take anything back from them depends on whether it makes sense to me Right. and I have always lived my life opening myself up to different perspectives trying to understand every single perspective mm. so I think that but there's I, always certain amount of truth right like, yeah everything stems from a truth at the end of yeah. the day like yeah but <coughs> Exaggerations are common. Yeah, in this world. have tried to filter. Yeah, <laughs> let's take it back a few years. Yeah, how did you get into this oracle reading? How did you, how did you decide to start it as a business? Because I remember at first now ungla mo da wati pata pa pop up store and the Anjali uh, reading. Yeah, if I'm not wrong. I get my facts right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's when I saw, you know, it started from there. Now you all have a shop. So how did you all get into this? How did you get into this? Like me, we must understand word manifest to its reality. So I always used to joke like, if nothing works out in my life, I would just go and do reading because that's how I look like for a reader. But then yeah, then COVID happened. Mm. Before that, I actually quit my job to travel around. But of course, COVID happened. You can't right. do that. Then. Right. Somehow I joined this spiritual group, like in Facebook, all virtually. Hmm. Yeah, so that's how the whole entire virtual concept started. Was that in COVID time, a lot of thing I did virtually, including going to masses. Like I didn't know that I can go to church virtually in my comfort of my own home, and hmm. I felt like it was way better than being in church. For okay. some reason, yeah, because like my dog was just there with me. Oh. It was literally like our family only, just sitting there. And once you're done, you can just like you know hug each other, and it was just like very nice the spiritual mass. Although my parents they couldn't receive the communion, so they didn't feel fulfilled. But I was so happy. Right. I learned a lot virtually, so I met this whole entire group of sisters, like all spiritually inclined. Then we had a lot of classes together, and one of them actually offered oracle class. Yeah, so funny is the year before I got a tarot deck, but I never dab into it. Like I just didn't. And COVID, because my father's like Malaysian, so they mm. are in Malaysia. So I was stuck in Malaysia, mm. and my deck was over here. So I understood what was Oracle, and it felt like more like me, because I don't like rules. I like just you know, trust myself and right. do something. Yeah, yeah. So then I started the whole entire like okay, I learn, and then I tried doing. So when COVID time, we actually had a lot of US based customers, like a lot of groups as well, okay. that they wanted readers and stuff like that. So yeah, that was like a whole different journey on how I literally build myself. And then COVID finished, we all could come back. So I came back in twenty twenty two. Yeah. <coughs> and then he also was missing for a very long time. Like I mean, he went to study wherever he went to study. Yeah, uh, I think it was Australia, Ukraine, Ukraine and yeah. 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 So literally, our time was only like in 2024. We were like literally close, and then he went to study. Then I also like you know went on my own uh, stuff. Then he will come back once in a while, but we never really into the spirituality. We will be doing other stuff, but never into this. In 2022, he used to come and hang out like weekends. He was like, okay, our cousin's house like that. Mm. Yeah, and then he will always ask me to take cards for him. <clears throat> yeah, so I'll always take, and then he also will always take the card and read, but. 
you know kids like your younger sibling nothing is serious <laughs> <laughs> nothing is serious <laughs> Bruh, i was serious no you be drinking the water take the card pool mm, okay lah you can read like that like Yeah, nothing I'm but learner, yeah so but he was learning he was observing he was learning but in a very like his own way right right even right. i so thought this boy like very playful like you know you i can see there is something but you like very playful but mm. he was learning in his own pace which is weird but i learn really fast <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then yeah so at one mm. point we actually couldn't do all the normal jobs and then we were like so I actually started the RT spiritual on the side mm-hmm. which I was doing then and I was also having my part-time job then and the part-time job was already like time to go like a lot of things was already happening it was really no time to go and then he also had another part-time job and it was just so obvious it was really time to go right. and then he kept telling me like uh, when are you going to start this like you know really you want to do roadshow all but you take no initiative <laughs> out of it and then I was like you know what you do it since you're talking so much right you go and find for the place and all and he legit found the next week <laughs> and i was like okay no more excuse already like literally no more excuse and the funny thing is she actually until the last day she was like no i've been i'm too busy for this she just gave me some kind of <laughs> like the fear of being rejected like you know i don't know whether i was a good reader back then like although my reviews were all good it's like doing face to face like over here and then like so many things were just running in my head And then the booth started at 11 a.m. But mm-hmm. I only reached at 5 p.m. So I literally took six hours for me to push myself to go there. Okay. Yeah. And then he finished his work and he came. And then he helped me to pull customer and all of that. Then the next day, he's like, when, uh, what time are you coming? Then I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm on the way. Then he's like, you know what? I'm going to start first. Then I'm like, okay, start. And then we started realizing like, like we got that. Gift. Yeah, like... Um, Like how I don't know how we linked up and stuff, but mm-hmm. it was very weird. The reading was so similar. Okay. Like whatever I'm doing, right? He's literally following <coughs> that concept of it. So that's the time that I actually realized this boy was listening to everything. Oh huh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like although it seems like it was a joke and all, but no, he literally was listening and he tried to understand how the importance of healing, the importance of guiding, and he just followed everything. Yeah, and then we started. It's scary because, like, I know everything about everyone, and yeah, <laughs> like when we start with the cards, right? Then suddenly he don't want to use the card anymore because he said like he knows. Then I'm like, yeah, you know, but we are oracle readers. We always have to rely on the card for you to be sure and for the customer to understand. If not, straight away y'all will be like, you're just reading me. You're just judging based on this and stuff like that. Okay, if I'm doing that, how did the card align? Yeah. Yeah. And I think when I started off also right okay so the the how we came to the store after that is pop up and then started trending in certain videos and then people came in and then started taking videos of us and then we had like uh, interviews with newspapers with different mm-hmm. uh, influential pages and stuff mm-hmm. like this lemonade we started trending on a lot of platforms and we just blew up over that six <coughs> months I think it wasn't even six months two weeks later mm-hmm. uh, three weeks after we started this pop up I think two weeks we started blowing up And then we moved from Neon Studio to Nirvana. We popped up outside because we needed a bigger space, and it's really not nice when the sun is burning your skin yeah, like yeah. I don't know, ten hours a day. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, okay. So we started doing this, and at that point, I was still working on building my own lab. But yeah, okay, we'll talk about that later. But yeah, it was just supposed to be, you know, let's just see how it goes. And at one point, we trended so much that we started doing about 120 customers a day, 130 customers a day. And together, then, together. Yeah, like together. But the funny thing is we were always accurate. It's always five-star ratings. It's always... We used to do paper feedback before we realized that we're going to open an actual business with it. Right. And then on our sixth month exactly, we just had a calling, kind of, and we rented a new space to collaborate with another sister of ours. Right. She has a store that does games, it does... Um, Bought Go here. Bought Go here, yeah. yeah so, so we are inside there. Yeah, so we have our, our floor there. And the funny thing is, how my spiritual journey started a little bit more is when I was working in... I used to work at a top university as a researcher for them. And when I was working there at the end of the day, like I kept seeing the angel numbers and that's how like when I started pulling out cards with her, my spiritual journey like became a little bit more heightened. I started seeing repetitive numbers and stuff and the unit that we are in is actually 44. Yeah. So it's like everything right. and I didn't have a choice. Like this was not our plan. It was just to pop up and see how it goes, build a client base. But we kind of trusted there would be more and somehow it's like at that point, yeah. Just happened. So by, by the time we reach our six months, we already completed up to 15,000 clients nice. and then uh, now it's <coughs> another six months from then because we actually just started 
like this is our one year anniversary a couple of days ago. Oh, huh? congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. So we're trying to expand a little bit more now. Right. So we're trying to also make it more on social media. So we created Google pages or Google mm. review pages. And we are working on a lot of other projects. Like we teach classes now. We do more energy healings and stuff. Cause support groups. Yeah, yeah, we run free support groups. We are trying to find funding for that too because we are trying to help the mental health crisis in Singapore. Right. So we have support groups. We have um, free workouts and stuff. You just like subsidize workouts like $5 or, or $10 a week. You can come for a certain class for yoga, heat training. <coughs> There's a lot of things that we're doing to help mental health crisis. But yeah, I think that's our journey all the way here. So one more interesting thing that you said earlier, right? Um, you were a scientist, or you are a scientist, right? Yeah. So, na research panel la, and you are a biomed student. Yeah, I'm a biomedical student and scientist. A scientist. Yeah. How did you transit from biomedical to oracle reading? Like, what's the journey there? So you know how I say that, like at the end of the day, the universe always aligns you to your life purpose one way or another. But it's whether you choose to not resist those changes. So basically, I was um, I worked my first job. Mm. And I was a diagnostic scientist, or they call it a medical technologist here. So I was a medical technologist at that point in time. And then I got promoted there. By one point, they weren't paying me enough. And I finished, like, I I learned everything I can. That people know that, like, people do that for 10 years. I learned it in that one year itself. So I was like, okay, next job. So I went to become a researcher. I became a researcher for actually a top university in the world. And I was doing my work. At that point, I'm not going to disclose which university or whatever, but the storyline is my boss kind of exploited me and then kind of fired me on the last day before a contract is supposed to end so at that point i was like okay you know what i am really smart i solved the problem that they had for two years in literally six hours so i could do this so i was like okay i'm gonna open my own lab so i started working on building my own lab and this was while i was doing my master's Mm. in biomedicine and while i was also working odd jobs so i used to work at a cruise center and then i also worked at a food packing center worst time of my life you know um yeah so it wasn't the best okay so at that point that's when i started the pop-up and Mm. this was six months after um, i left my job in this university and i was trying to get investors and stuff like this it wasn't working out at that point in time so when we started this pop-up like i said it was just meant to be for her Right. But somehow I got involved because my sister here likes to dress bougie and come really late because she's the celebrity of everything, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so she decided to dress bougie and come late as per usual. And I had to, like a lot of customers. Hmm. So I had to like, I cannot just let my sales go like that. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do the readings instead. And yeah, the, then we started blowing up like just randomly. And now we're here. So, you know what? I'm just going to trust in the process. Right. I kind of know why all this has happened. Uh, our theory is okay so uh, at this point because of astrology there's different phases in astrology and because of this point there is a shift in consciousness that means that a lot of people are kind of becoming more enlightened or becoming heightened and more optimistic you would realize that a lot of people you know now are way more optimistic than they used to be you know like people that you used to know it's because it's a collective kind of increase in the consciousness and every country or every place in the world has their own person or group of people that can help that and in Singapore we are the only ones focusing on healing because I've met a lot of other spiritual people or readers. They don't focus on healing. They tell you to go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist. They do things that, you know, help you get well for whatever, but they don't focus on the essential component, which is you work on yourself. You can do anything. You can attract anything that you want. So I think, yeah, that's my Yeah, because like last year, February, right? So we entered in the world of astrology. We went into new age of Aquarius. Mm. Which basically it means like enlightenment, the year of enlightenment as well. Okay. And from this year itself, you will see a lot of things that especially Hollywood is really going to go down in the way that you all know Didi and the stories, everything, right? Like why would everything just come out to light suddenly? Mm. It's been happening for years, but why? It's like a total washout. It's literally the old Noah and the Ark story, right? Right. He had a flood and all, but this is just something very different, something to suit our time. Yeah, so it's a transition from, you know, a transition where everyone realizes that spirituality and a lot of truths are going to come out. The consciousness of, of the yeah. world is going to shift. So we are going to like, the whole concept of oneness, I think. Yeah. And yeah, the period where uh, the age of Aquarius started is also the period where there was a Nobel Prize that was finally won to prove the experiments, the repeated experiments that showed the quantum entanglement thing I told you about just yeah. now and the particle thing. The Yeah. So... Yeah. And we also realize there is more readers as well. Mm. Yeah. And 
I think when we started, we were the first, the only one who's like really into healing and all. But I think right right now, a lot of people are adopting that. Like tarot readers also have oracle decks already because they understand that there's no more only one future. We can create another. Yeah. yeah, So they're also incorporating both already. Yeah. So we also started giving homeworks to our customers. And now I think a lot of other readers are also doing that same thing. (laughs) They're also giving homework to their customers. They are learning. Like, I'm not going to say that we created this, but I think in this country, especially, we really yeah. created this because it was saturated, like it still is saturated with so many people that I honestly do not want to associate with because they just slam futures on people. There's no point to slamming futures. Mm. Yes, you make money, but at the end of the day, you also ruin a life possibly. Mm. The, like, like, it goes back to the thing, the belief. Yeah, there's so many times we had customers who came in crying because other readers told them complete, like, yeah, like, a break, like even like we all go and see our jada girl and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah. then they say okay you cannot be with this particular person <coughs> like to me actually you can be it is just that it's very challenging to be with this person the way that you're born you cannot because you have those natural traits Tra- yeah so mm. to me it is that if you know your good time and your bad time which means you learn how to act okay it's my bad time ready better I take a step back not this is the time I go and argue and stuff like that yeah mm-hmm. so that is how you use it as a guideline Do you don't take it and like no it's my bad time I'm just going to be at home no to yeah. be more cautious and yeah yeah like you know for example let's say someone comes in and they have like a terrible toxic relationship it's complete like you know i think it's bs for people to tell them that oh you guys are twin flames or you guys are soulmates and whatever yeah you can be soulmates you can be twin flames or you can be not either it could also be a karmic relationship but the point is if it's not good for you walk away from it don't put yourself in a place of suffering you cannot heal when there is re- you cannot heal from a wound imagine i just keep stabbing the same wound again and again and again it's never gonna heal you cannot mm-hmm. heal in the place that broke you. Yeah, you cannot mm-hmm. heal in the place that broke you. So I think that is one thing I really do not like about New Age spirituality and the way that people are doing things nowadays. And that is why I'm not... It's not about me promoting my side or our service itself. It's about me telling that Actually, a general to be message. honest, spirituality has became like another religion. Mm. Mm. Like I sell you crystals, I sell you this, I sell you that. It's yeah. become like a trend. Yeah, it's become yeah. like a trend, and like I, a new religion that you have to do all of this to be in spiritual. But I think you don't have to. Yeah, like nothing really triggers me anymore about normal life situations. But this fact really triggers me every single time I come across another reader who does the same thing. You know, it's just help people heal. You don't need to BS your way through shit. You know, like yeah, okay, your predictions can be right, but. It literally means that if I tell you that you're going to be very successful, I had a dream that you're going to be very successful, you are going to trust the fact that I, that dream is going to happen and you're going to believe in it. You're going to surrender, like actually have a belief in it and it is going to happen. And yeah, that's great. But it's, you know, you can help people in bad situations by telling them good things. But ultimately, remember that you need to help heal people. That is the whole point of spirituality. <laughs> Don't say that. It's all love and light and not do any love and light. <laughs> you know what I mean? Practice what you preach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. practice what you preach. Don't and be a hypocrite. Not tap thing. on the people's vulnerability. Yeah, la. do not tap on people's vulnerabilities. And I know as a spiritual person, I'm not supposed to say that because it goes against, like, right, you know, right. spirituality because yeah. it makes other people look like idiots. But I think that be very careful when you choose your readers. Be very careful who you invite into your house to do, you know, cleansing and cleansing stuff like and this. All of yeah. Yeah. yeah, be very, like, Recent- I mean, energy is real. Uh, so. yeah. mm-hmm. Like recently, there's this new trend. I think it's a cult from uh, somewhere in Asia that's coming in. I'm not going to say exactly where, but they're doing energy healings and stuff. And I can tell you, the energy there is really freaking bad. Like, and you don't really- have to be a reader, but when you pass by, you can already feel yeah. like and so much of stagnant and like, okay, so when you were working with energy, protection mm-hmm. and cleansing is a must. Yeah, and your source of energy is also a must. You don't need special equipment to channel from God or the universe. If you attune yourself to a certain frequency, for example, there is you're limiting yourself and you're taking it from something you don't even know where you're taking it from. Yeah. So so must be mindful where we source. Like the sun is very powerful, the moon is very powerful, but you if you source from there, I think that that's fine because it's natural at the end of the day. I mean, there's. I think that's the best form. Yeah, like you just source from God. You just ask God. You say like God today. Give me a really good day and trust it. Don't be like, oh, I asked for a good day, so shit's going to happen. Maybe a good day means you learn a lot of lessons and every obstacle is a lesson. You learn from it. Great. You're not going to feel like life shit. Mm. You're just going to be like, shit, I learned a lot today. Yeah. So be very careful who you invite into your house and anywhere else or anyone who's doing any service on you. Be careful. Actually, like really advice, like if you're all right, your bedroom, try not to let other people sleep on your bed. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, because energy will really transfer, no, really. And then, you know, like our mother always will say, wash your leg, my grandmother, wash your leg before you come in the house. 
all of that like now I understand why is it so important I also understand uh, the thing where yeah. they say like your friends need to be good like yeah you know, like everything yeah. only now like, yeah but you know they yeah. don't truly understand it but somehow they <laughs> give us those uh, subtle messages yeah. and then you understand it in depth they, they, no, they don't explain it yeah, why yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. for example yeah, yeah. but there is actually maybe a reasoning for there that reason yeah. it, yeah. so yeah. you don't explain it that's yeah. where it feels yeah, like, of yeah. Course. yeah but now that we understand then like last time I'll always be so annoyed with my amachi because I'll wash the leg and come in yeah, yeah. it's so annoyed but now it's an auto thing if yeah. I don't wash I can't go like yeah, yeah. but now I understand why so, so my, my, my cousin right, he, has a, he has a dog yeah. uh, so um he he always ha- he has this habit because parents told him like really really and we didn't the car called the video card no it was one and his dog doesn't bark at him and also it was mm-hmm. one time he came back at night and the dog was barking at him like profusely okay so and he was like okay and because yeah. it, it's like when you're young you your grandparents tell you this you just mm-hmm. do for the sake of doing it right? so, yeah, so yeah. After, um this is so he went in wash his like then only the dog stopped the dog stopped barking okay then ever since then he like okay believe me yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 so like animals can so see it yeah. but i wouldn't say all animals because sometimes if they are too domesticated they do not mm-hmm. yeah perceive it yeah but also g- g- learning about ghosts are pretty cool like hot, yeah, yeah I, i use my i use my dog as my compass <laughs> wow okay okay, okay. so, so I, cause i i walk my dog at night right yeah. so there's there's certain areas and certain pe- he doesn't bark at people Okay. But there are certain people he bucks at. Okay, yeah, yeah. And it just so happens that there are certain people who he bucks at where mm-hmm. where I see them from afar I just get a weird feeling. Okay. I it's not I don't know if it's a vibe but it's just a weird feeling. It's a vibe. Oh, okay, it's a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> so and and I see that the person is look super weird. Then and my dog bucks at them and I was like, "Okay, so he really from I run away." <laughs> You know I used But to do yeah. that too. Oh, Mila, boy, yeah, we had run away. What you gonna do? Go. Just walk past lah. What if I don't know? Yeah. The dog's really warning you like. Yeah, yeah I think I like know. you see, that's the difference between normal people and sensitive people, right? Like we would just see like, oh, let's see what's really that you walk past. Curious. But you don't know the effects that it's going to have on you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I feel there are certain people where I have walk past. Yeah. Then mm. Okay, let's say I'm here and they're there. The moment I pass them, I feel like a... I would say like a, a heaviness. tingle. Yeah. A weird, heavy goosebump tingle sort yeah. of feeling the moment I pass them. And yeah. it's there for a few seconds. You want to know why? Sure. No, Because they're probably they, not real. <laughs> they could be real. But anyways, <laughs> the point is, no, it's probably something that's attaching to them. And right, you're right. actually passing through it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we can. Yeah, we can talk more about that later on. But yeah. Sure. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> no, I, I'm. I'm legit because I don't know shit about this. Yeah. But there are certain experiences that I've had that, like when I tell you about yeah. it, I do feel. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. The one, the one that reminds me is actually the. The one I don't. Okay. So. Quite <laughs> <laughs> For context, I I'm a very visual person. Okay, so like okay. I I when I see a horror movie, like, I'm just very visual like I can visualize it, like. Okay, okay. So, uh what I usually do is when I come for recording, I I go with him like tumpang. Ready mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 naya kudi dope, naya Bruce kudi dope. Yeah, my dog's name after Batman, by the way. Yeah, okay. Bruce and the naraka go pona, and the foil la da, the pickup point la da, and the usually we'll wait la. Okay, okay. So Walking, walking. Then you see, he saw somebody staring at a block, uh, at, at some high so, level. So uh. my, my, there's a pub in my mm. house. Uh, just, just outside my house. Then uh, there was this person who was just standing and looking at a fixed house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I saw, and it's weird because I walk my dog at like like midnight, eleven yep. or midnight. Because he he likes to pee like grass. He's grass trained. Yep. He does not like to pee at home, which okay, is okay. quite annoying. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so, so I have to bring him down to pee before bed every day. So uh, there was this person I just saw from afar. It's like very weird. It's like I don't know where the person is just standing and looking at this house. Mm-hmm. Then I saw the person. I was like, okay, never mind. It might be just weird. Because I'm I'm at, I'm downstairs and the person is just staring at his house at night. So he, he was, was like barking. under a tree. Sorry, was he under a tree? So she, I think. So right? she was she under oh. a tree. Under a tree, yeah. <laughs> and, and I think he was barking, right? Yeah. I saw the person first, and I was trying to go away, but then my dog, he, you know, when dogs get aggressive, they are on their front legs and then their tail is up. Those, yeah. And he's like, and I'm like, I yo yo, you wanna fuck with me? I slowly go. <laughs> are there any common misconceptions that you guys have? Faced or been asked with when you guys are doing your sessions, 
Mm, there are some people that no matter how many times they come to me, thank you for the tarot reading. Thank you for the tarot reading. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, great. And then there was this one person, the aura. Oh yeah, yeah, they come for aura reading. Then they ask us if we can do witchcraft to bring <laughs> back their exes. Yeah. I mean, I can, but I won't. I've done things that yeah. can be very powerful, but I won't. It's just not right. And then one time down there, I literally prayed to God to stop the rain because I need to do business. So obviously God's going to listen to you and stop the rain. From there, we became the witches of the street. Yeah, and then people started plotting against us a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Right. It was a good experience, you know, because the effects after that was catastrophic <laughs> for them, not for me. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like it's sort of reverse said. Uh, okay, so basically, I mean, they believe, right? That, oh, they're doing something. They're doing something. All I did was I literally asked God that I really need to open my shop, so please stop the rain. Yeah, but they already believe that we can do anything, so I think they invited whatever. Yeah, because yeah. what I did was to protect my space. So after, like, when we opened the store, there was a lot of people in the street itself that weren't even our competitors, but they found ways to shut us down or get us reported, get us closed down because apparently we were stealing their customers, but they were just salty that they cannot market their own things. Right. Okay. But the point is I did something to protect my space and uh, there were quite a few enemies. We did like a little bellow, belly, um, belly, 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 uh, sorry, a little belly to see which are the people that are linked together and who is like, you know, sending us negative energy and whatsoever. So at that point, I did something to protect the space and the biggest people that were sending us the most negative energy, their stores like literally 24 hours after. That was not my intention, okay? I wasn't sending anything back negative, but that's what the universe wanted to do with it. So their stores literally physically started falling apart on that same day. Okay. So like, for example, one rubbish bin caught on fire. And then the next one who was in the same group that we pulled the ballots from, um, Something in sign the like, yeah, the sign board like, drop, then crash the into the store, like a really heavy one. Down, the window yeah. fell. There's a lot of things, and that was not my intention. But I think that that is like when I asked the universe, why do you do that? Because I felt really bad. I was really like gonna cry. I was like, do that. That was not my intention. But then the the messages I got from the universe was it's a warning to people that yeah, it's a warning because we are capable of things if we want to. You also mentioned earlier that you wanted to talk about crystals. Oh yeah. So like, what, what? so actually, the funny thing is, this crystal is very related to the entire stars crashing down and whatsoever. So this is called Molto White. It's basically a meteorite that is fifteen to sixteen million years old. It's rarer than diamonds, by the way. Okay, so it's quite expensive, and it's called a transforming stone. Like there are other stones that are also transforming stones, like labradorite, malachite, and then Molto White is the most powerful. Yeah, like baby. Most... So you start with labradorite and malachite first, yeah. and then you go Molto White. But Molto White is a changing stone, so. In if six not, months, you will see your highest and your lowest. Yeah. Oh. So it's gonna, if you're not ready for it, like my journey was actually quite easy compared to the customers that I've got it for. <coughs> uh, my journey was quite smooth. There was a lot of emotional things that came out, but I'm always like, at that point, I was already in my journey where I'm like, okay, everything happens for a reason. Everything is a lesson. If I learn from it, bad lessons are not going to happen. So everything, a single thing happened. I just accepted it. I learned from it. And so my journey was simple, but it also gave me a lot of, uh, it made me, like, it doesn't give you power, but it helps you connect to your power, which can be very, 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 very strong, depending on your ancestral lineage and stuff like that. Right. right. Okay, so it helps it's me connect. Like a major clan. So people who no longer serve you will be removed. They will literally be, be removed, removed from your life. Huh. Yeah. And you get it. You just need to trust it. <laughs> yeah. And whatever but it you... it won't be easy because, like, like for him, he's emotionally very connected to people. So right, right, yeah. So like my clients, right? They have had like there are clients. I think two of my clients. They're so scared to put it back on. Like they have kept it for like a month or two months, but they're so scared to put it back on because right. they're so scared their life's gonna fall apart again. <laughs> but the ones that kept it, their life has fallen apart, but it fell apart for the best. And yeah. now they are succeeding. They're doing exactly what they want. One of them is traveling the world, doing content creation and just living her life. Another one is changing her jobs and she's becoming a team leader. Like she's taking up more of a leadership position in a very mm. big company. Then there are, yeah, we, like we also have uh, celebrity clients that have bought it and stuff like this. So 
yeah, there's a lot of people have who have seen changes with this particular stone. So it's, it's not a immediate. Okay, you wear this, it's like hundred percent success. It's it not not say hundred percent. It's not an immediate success. It's like yeah. you have to go through the hardship. Yeah, your life's gonna crash down for the first two yeah, weeks. Yeah, so at literally least. rock bottom, and then then it's yeah. like. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. But yeah, I sell it too now. But I personally modulate the energies because one of the things I realize <laughs> is when you just directly buy it, the energies are not cleansed. They can contain a lot of negative energy from the person that's holding onto it or the shipment and stuff like this, and that's going to affect the impact of the Malter White. And mm. I also tune it, or we also attune it to people's energies because we need to remember this is a celestial object or it's a meteorite that has terrestrial parts to it, but it's mm. not very grounded. It's not very programmed to be put on a human. Mm-hmm. If you're an extraterrestrial or you're in a high vibration, like you're just your soul, yes, this will be a very good stone. But if you're physical, like you need to attune it a little bit more so that it is more grounded, it's less volatile. And I think that is one of the special services we offer. And we, right. yeah, but like five grams of, oh, five grams, one gram can go up to a hundred dollars. Oh, okay. yeah. So it's, right. it's rarer than diamonds. Right, right, yeah. right. But there are more powerful stones that are after that. Yeah. Awesome. I think this has been a, yeah, very this has been a, <laughs> Education. Education and uh, eye opening, I would say, to a certain extent. Thank you. And it's, it's fun talking been, to you guys. Too. It's been great having you. <laughs> Any messages you have for your friends, clients, fans? Thank you for supporting us throughout our entire journey. But also, I think that one of the things that a lot of people need to understand is leaving reviews for people is very important when it comes to any business. So take the time to leave those reviews. Like I have changed a lot of lives and they've sent me personal text messages, but I would prefer if it's on Google reviews, like put it out there so that people know and recommend it to your friends if we have made an impact because mm-hmm. you can be doing good in that way too. Yeah. I just want to thank my customers, but I want to thank the ones that actually changed themselves. Like we can say, but if you didn't go and do the homework, then mm-hmm. I wouldn't have feel some sort of fulfillment yeah. yeah for the ones who actually do and when they come back and when you can really feel their energy so, so much different. lighter and so much brighter mm. like for me I feel like okay I'm in the right place I'm doing something beneficial so yeah yeah like the impact like for example there are so many customers who come in really depressed they hate their entire life their entire life has been so bad right. but like after the first but session, we can only say right they have to work on it we give them yeah. homework we motivate them we do what we need based on energy and stuff like this but when they come back like two weeks later or even one month later or whatever, they are completely different people, like completely different. They are, they have this glow that you can just like, oh shit, you're not depressed anymore. You're like yeah, okay. happier than me like- at this point. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. It's very, very uh, enlightening or positive. Happy to hear that like people actually manage to and make it, such yeah. improvements and they trust the process especially yeah. I, mean, I mean through the whole episode I've managed to a comment that I've been able to see is that people need to trust the process as yeah. and as much as not not be so focused on the outcome go through the process yes exactly I, said, I think I know that it's like our belief yeah and trust yeah. in yourself Just what, trust what in you, you believe yeah. in is what you create yeah. yeah awesome I think that's a very good note to end very good way to end the episode you know like you know how Einstein and everyone has little quotes then they have like uh, Einstein black and white yeah you should do mine and Arvin, Arvin. yeah yeah exactly okay, okay. <laughs> can, then we take the hit shot <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice plain background <laughs> okay thank you Nirgale okay.